What's up guys, welcome back to Cars, Cost, and Technology. We've got a really awesome video for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the 2020 C8 Corvette Convertible. I want to give a huge thanks to my friends Robert and Shannon out of Atlanta for giving me the opportunity to drive the car and check it out for the afternoon so I can share my key takeaways and impressions with all of you. I think this video will be really helpful for any of you who are on the fence trying to decide between the coupe or the convertible. Uh, for me, this is actually the fourth different C8 Corvette that I've had the opportunity to drive, so uh, really excited to sort of reflect on some of the differences and things that I liked and disliked about each spec, whether you're looking at the coupe or convertible, as well as some of the different options that these different cars have been equipped with. So really excited to talk about that with you. Now, I will point out that all the different Corvettes that I've actually driven for reviews, as well as the different Corvettes I've owned personally, I've never driven a Corvette convertible. So sort of interesting there. I am excited for this to be the first convertible Corvette that I drive since it is the 2020 Corvette and we were looking at the hard top convertible now versus the soft top convertible that was available with all the different previous generation Corvettes. So really excited about that change made to the lineup. I think that the hard top is much more appealing to me personally than the soft top convertibles have been in the past. Now, for those of you that aren't really familiar with the hardtop convertible on the C8 Corvette, I want to go over just a few of the specs, kind of give you a quick rundown of what you're looking at. It is a $7,500 option, so the hardtop convertible definitely comes with a pretty high price premium over the softtop convertibles in the past, but it only adds 77 pounds to the weight of the C8 Corvette. You're looking at a time of about 16 seconds for the top to go up or down, so pretty quick there, and it also is able to do that at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour while the car is moving. So really convenient if you're driving the car whether it starts raining or maybe the temperature has changed from the morning or going into the evening so you want to put the top up or down having the ability to do that while driving is huge and obviously one of the major pros of going with the convertible but there's also a lot of things that stood out to me that i really wasn't expecting coming into this video that i wanted to share with you guys because my biggest concern coming into driving this car was I really hope that this car is able to impress me or show me why it's worth $7,500 to go with the convertible option when most of us Corvette fans know that the coupe has come with the ability to remove the target top for as long as you can remember. I was actually really surprised in my experience and have a totally different outlook on it than when I set out to make this video, so I can't wait to go over some of those points with you. But first thing that I want to talk about is just the appearance of the hardtop convertible in person. Obviously, a mid-engine car looks exotic to begin with, but when you look at the hardtop convertible design, this is puts it in a very, very small category of vehicles that you'd see this design on, um, and it definitely looks more like a supercar than even the coupe does. Uh, to me, it definitely has the Ferrari or, or Lamborghini look in that rear design, um, or McLaren maybe. Again, there's a very small group of cars that you're going to see on the road that have a mid-engine hardtop convertible design. So it just really looks exotic and even more like a supercar than the C8 Coupe already does. I even found myself looking at the Corvette Visualizer online and kind of specking out my dream spec on a Stingray convertible. Uh, again, this, this car looks really good in person. For me, I would want to black out the A-pillars and the roof, go with the black nacelles in the back. Um, but the design, it looks so good. It is sort of a bummer that you can't see the engine, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later in the video. Uh, I think that that's something that I could actually personally get over when we talk about some of the other advantages of going with the convertible. But like I said, with the blacked out roof line and the nacelles in the back, whether the top is up or down, I just think it looks really, really exotic, really good looking car in person especially. Now, one of the things that stood out to me that I wasn't expecting and I was really impressed with is the different sound in the cabin when you're in the convertible versus the coupe. So the direct injection noise coming from the engine on the coupe can be a little bit annoying. You know, you've got the engine right there behind your head and you can hear that ticking noise coming from the direct injection. And that's been a factor on previous generation Corvettes as well. I mentioned that in a video where I discussed some of the things that I didn't like about my C7 Corvette. And pretty much anyone who's driven either a C7 or C8 can uh, attest to the sound of the direct injection can be a little bit loud, especially if you have your windows rolled up, no music turned on. You hear sort of a ticking noise where the uh, direct injection is spraying the fuel into the engine. C8 Corvette Coupe, because the engine's right behind you, it actually sounds a little bit louder. 
where in the convertible, you know, the point I'm getting at here is all the panels and components of the convertible top sitting over top of the engine bay actually mask that noise a little bit. So surprisingly, you hear less ticking and you're actually able to hear the exhaust better because of the rear window on the uh, convertible design. You can roll that down even with the top being up. So you get a better sound of your exhaust and less sound of the ticking or the direct injection noise. And combined together to me was a lot better driving experience than the uh, coupe was personally. I just enjoyed hearing more exhaust sound, less of the direct injection noise. So uh, just something I want to pass along to any of you sort of considering that. Again, if you haven't ever heard the noise, it's hard to translate on video, especially over GoPro audio. Now, speaking of noise, you know, again, we talked about the exhaust sounding better with the rear window down. That's a great plus. But you've also got the better handling of the wind when the top is down with the rear window and the uh, convertible design. I feel like with the C8 Coupe, because there is that barrier between the engine bay and the cabin, when you have the target top off, the wind sort of hits that barrier and it's just a dead stop, sort of creates this really loud, um, almost like a whipping effect with the wind noise. So it's a little bit louder. And in the convertible, of course, that is addressed with the uh, divider there in the middle, that window being able to go down and then the cells around the outer edge, giving you a little bit better design to sort of cut through the wind instead of getting that whipping or loud noise uh, for you and your passenger with the top down. So really impressed by that. There's also a lot of convenience features with the convertible, the faster operation, the ability to operate the top while driving. Uh, up to 30 miles an hour. You also have the ability to store more in the trunk when you have the top down. When you have a coupe C8 Corvette, you do lose that rear storage when your top is stowed away in there. Uh, not a huge factor, but if you're going on longer road trips and want the ability to put your top up and down, definitely can be a pretty big factor there. So I can see that being a huge plus for uh, potential uh, convertible owners. You have the ability to operate the top from the key fob as well. So that's a really cool feature, whether you're trying to uh, get the car ready for a cruise, maybe you're getting ready to leave work and you want the top down when you come out to it, or if you want to show a friend or family member or someone at a car show. Um, even though you do forfeit the ability to see your engine bay, seeing this top in action going down is, I mean, it makes the car look even more like a transformer. I mean, it, it is a really cool thing to watch in person, how the top actually operates and slides all the different components in and out. Now only time will tell if this mechanism is gonna be reliable and hold up to the long-term test of time of people closing and opening it. I know typically convertibles are more prone to mechanical failures with the latches and the ceiling. Again, we'll have to see how the C8 Corvette holds up to that over time. But for now, I definitely was impressed with how smooth the operation was. It wasn't very noisy at all. Everything seemed to work very smoothly and flawlessly on all the different times that I attempted to open and close it. If you're thinking about maybe going with a convertible, but you're concerned about that additional $7,500, trying to decide how that would fit into the budget on your personal C8 Corvette. I will say that one of the biggest reasons that I encourage people to go with the 2LT trim level on the C8 Corvette is for the rear camera mirror, just because of blind spots on the mid-end design of this car, where on the 1LT convertible car, you do get the rear camera mirror. So that's a pretty huge factor. I know it may not sound like it, but for me personally, it's, it would be really tempting if I was constantly wanting the top down and again, to get some of these other benefits that we've talked about to go with the 1LT convertible over a 2LT coupe. Uh, just something to think about there when you're looking at your budget and how you could potentially spec this car. I mentioned the engine bay not being visible on the convertible and I wanted to go back to talking about the road trips. We talked about the ability to have additional storage even with the top down. I also want to point out that the engine bay in the coupe, because of venting along the top hatch, it does get really dirty. So whether that's uh, dust, pollen, road debris, salt, uh, water spots, there's a lot of junk that can get in the engine bay of the coupe and really look sort of messy. If you're not the type that wants to clean out your engine bay often, or you don't really care for, uh, you know, having to clean it after longer trips, I think that the convertible kind of presents a unique opportunity where you can't see the engine bay, but you also don't have to worry about cleaning it. So for those longer road trips, you got less to worry about with uh, junk and debris getting all back there and being a, a huge eyesore when you go to open your rear hatch or show someone the engine of the car. Uh, but anyway, that's obviously just a little bit of a side point, not a big factor. For me though, in conclusion, I will say that I was really impressed with how smooth the car rode. Uh, everything sounded really good inside, whether you had the top up or down. Again, the lack of uh, direct injection noise and the better sounding exhaust note coming from the rear window, uh, better handling of the wind noise coming through the cabin of the car, as well as just the functionality and smoothness of the top coming up and down. I could definitely see myself actually going with a convertible in the future. 
my wife loves driving with the top down um, all the different Corvettes that I've had so I think that she would be a huge fan of going this route versus going with the coupe where it's a little more work involved and, and a little more uh, time consuming to uh, go out for a cruise with the top down but Anyway, guys, I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback on this. I'm really curious how many of you have a convertible on order or are thinking about going with a convertible versus a coupe. Of course, they're really great cars, each of them. You can't go wrong with either option, but I just felt like with the uh, smaller amount of convertibles out there and just the limited amount of experience I've had with it, I felt it was really important to share some of these really good takeaways and things that I found on the car. And there's even more so that I can't really cover on video. You have to take my word for any of these sound aspects just simply because GoPro audio is just not going to do it justice compared to what you're going to hear in person. But anyway, guys, like I said, let me know your feedback down below. I appreciate you watching the video. Look forward to talking to you uh, in the comments. I'd be glad to answer any questions that I can on the car for you. But thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll talk to you next time. Have a great day.